or to bring your mind to the breath. And see if you can keep it here. The mind has a tendency that it likes to travel. It can go around the world in just a few seconds. It can go to outer space. It can go all kinds of places. But it doesn't know how to stay. And this is a problem, because the mind is what pulls us into whatever rebirth we're going to go. It's what does samsara. We think of samsara as a place, but it's actually more of a process. It's something the mind does. It wanders. It picks up something, plays with it for a while, and then puts it down, picks up something else, plays with it for a while, and puts it down. Which wouldn't be too bad, except for the things that it picks up can often sting it, often cause it pain. It's one of the reasons why we put them down. It's like walking along the beach, picking up something, and it turns out it's a poisonous animal that can bite you. You drop it and put it down. Some are more poisonous than others. But everything has to get put down, put down, because it can't last. So the question is, where can you go that's safe? The only thing you can, the only really safe place, of course, is nirvana. But there is some safety in learning first how to control your mind. So when you see something looks pretty, looks attractive, you can ask yourself, wait a minute, is this dangerous? A lot of the pretty things in the world, especially animals that are very pretty, are very poisonous. And the same with some of the attractions of what world mind, the mind might go to. So you have to learn how to say no to those things. And learn how to develop the discernment so you can watch things. Because the Buddha said, some things are better than others. It's not like every pleasure is a bad pleasure. He says the beginning, beginning of wisdom is when you see that there's a long-term happiness and that you can work toward it through your own actions. Where do your actions come from? They come from the mind. So you've got to work on the mind to make sure that it is under your control, so that it does the things you really want it to do. Otherwise, you make up your mind to do something, and all of a sudden you find yourself going off in a 90-degree angle from it. Now, why is that? It's a lack of mindfulness, a lack of alertness. And by staying with the breath, these are two qualities that you really develop. You have to keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Don't get frustrated by the coming back, because in the coming back, you exercise the mind's ability to recognize that it's done something wrong and can correct. It's like strengthening your muscles. The exercises are pretty boring in the beginning, but you keep repeating them again and again and again, and the strength comes. And as for alertness, you want to be very clear about what the mind is doing. If that's foggy, it'll wander off and you won't know. You're distracted by something else. You forget and you don't know. It's a bad state to be in, when, especially when the time comes and you have to leave this body. All the lessons you've learned through life about what's useful and what's not, what's safe and what's not, you start forgetting them. And then you go for the little things that attract children, things that look pretty on the outside but are poisonous when you pick them up. So you want to be careful when you maintain the mind state of being an adult, which comes from being mindful and comes from being alert. And putting some energy into doing this. You may say that you don't have much energy. Well, the energy that you do have that's devoted to the practice is well used. Otherwise, what energy you do have gets fruited away with other things. And this is where your energy should be focused. This is where it should be devoted, to get the mind under control. So it becomes a friend instead of your enemy. <laughs>